Hello, today this is the introduction to physiology of fitness with our first topic which is ATP. I'm going to try and keep this under five minutes because I tend to lie and say that it will be five minutes and end up being ten. So I'm going to do my best to crack straight on. This is going to be an introduction into ATP. What is it and what is, is, it, is its role within our body um, regarding to energy systems? Energy systems, all they are is the way in which the body can take energy from the food we eat, deliver it to where we need to use it, in this case exercising, so where our muscles are, so then it can be used for movement and muscle contractions. So depending how good we are at these different energy systems um, will tell us about how we can exercise at different durations and different intensities. For example, Paula Radcliffe, excellent marathon runner, what makes... Um, her one of her energy, energy systems so good that she can t continue running at a really fast pace for a really long period of time. Same if we look at Usain Bolt. What about his energy systems when he's running the 100 metres? How have they developed to be make him so good? Now, all the fuel um, that gives us our energy comes from one thing, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So if we have a look at the tri bit... As you know, this means three. So we have three times the phosphate. That's all that means. Okay, so we have our adenosine, which is a protein, and then tr tacked onto that are three times phosphates. Now we're going to have a look on our next slide about what the makeup of that is. Okay, um, well, actually, we're going to look at that in a little bit. ATP, we call that the energy currency um, because. Everything to do making energy, storing energy, is all about ATPs. How many ATPs does it take to power something? Um, that's because it's the one thing which is one stop away from either releasing energy or storing energy. So you have your really big molecules. So you eat um, a plate of pasta, which is your carbs. They get them broken down, blah, 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 digestive. You're going to look at that through in your sports nutrition module. Um, but they get them broken down too, all the way to ATP. So it's a bit like you work a job and then you get your money, you get paid. Okay, so energy currency or uh, cash money if you're doing it a little bit gangster. Okay, so that's all about getting down to the micro molecule, which is ATP, because this is how energy is not only. Um, Energy comes from the ATP, but we also can store it in ATP. Okay, moving on to energy conservation. Um, now, this pretty much is just a little bit advanced. At this is degree level, but this is to tell you about why ATP uses and stores energy. Um, so, if we have a look here. We have to see that energy is not, is not created or destroyed, only transferred from one thing to another. So we can see we've got the Lion King here, circle of life. That's the only thing I've got in there because it's like a big circle. And these things here are examples of all the different forms energy can come in. Now you've seen these. When you flick on a light, the energy comes out from the light. The light bulb gets hot as well, so you've got energy coming out in the form of heat. Um, you've got chemical as well, which is perhaps in your food, kinetic just means movement, elastic. When you pull back a rubber band and let it go, that elastic energy fires that rubber band. So let's have a look here. We have our sun, which then, um, so that's giving out light and heat energy. That makes sugar cane a plant. So using photosynthesis, it makes it into ATP to grow. Sugar cane is then used to make Lucasade or Big Macs. And I don't think you're saying uses either of these, but let's say that he then drinks the Lucasade, eats the Big Mac, that gives him energy to then run, which is our kinetic energy. And then also, afterwards, he might be sweating. So then we then have heat, and we have heat energy then losing the body. So it's gone from light to chemical to chemical to kinetic to heat again. So we can see that that circle of life is happening there. And this slide looks like an absolute mess. But um, hopefully you got the picture. If not, just go back before the mess and then just follow it round. Okay, so here we have um, the almost the structure of ATP. 
So like we said, the T stands for try. So we can see here we've got the adenosine and then we've got the one, two, three phosphates. And this arrow here should be pointing to this bond. So all the most of the energy in ATP is in that third bond there between the second and third phosphate. Okay, so there's energy within that. That bond is then broken and energy sort of spills out of it to then power um, muscular contraction, um, breathing, digestion, everything needs ATP to work. Okay, so when this bond is broken, energy is released. So now if we look at this next bit, we see the format hasn't worked properly because the arrow is down there. But ATP, the actual equation is ATP is broken down. It then gives adenosine diphosphate. So we know tri is 3. If we break it down, so we take away a phosphate, there's that third one there. We have adenosine di. So di means 2 times phosphate. And then we have our energy there which is spilled up from the bond. And diphosphate there. Okay, so that is pretty much how ATP is broken down to make, well not to make energy because we know that it can't be created, but it can release energy that then can be used by the body. Okay, next one we have um, how a energy is stored in the body. Um, so we have our diphosphate, which as you know means two di. Um, this will then bind with another phosphate, so we have here our dye with up here as two phosphates, we're adding another one, plus energy, so perhaps we've eaten our meal, the carbs are broken down, we've got the energy and we're using it to combine phosphate with ADP to make our ATP again, um, and this is also known as has we had our diagram before, adenosine with three phosphates, one, two, three. So this should be moved over here away from this arrow. Okay, because this is what, this is ATP. So you can see in the previous slide it was broken down, in this one energy has been stored. So ATP has been made, but energy hasn't, just stored up in that bond there. Okay. So I want you to come to the lesson ready to answer what ATP is, maybe how it's made using ADP and the other phosphate. Um, and also, I want you to think about how the, the, this applies to the next kind of question, which we'll be answering within the lesson. How do we take energy from the food? Why can't you say Bolt sprint that fast for 3,000 metres? How come Paula Radcliffe can jog for a long time? What is it with regards to her energy and her ATP levels or things that can help her create ATP that means that she can jog for a long time? And this one, this last question is linked to that first one. Why does exercise make me hungry? I know that after when I train, my body sort of craves calories and needs that energy. But why is that? Why do we need to then put food back in the body? Okay, thank you very much for listening. I look forward to hearing all about the circuit, circle of life in the lesson.